Four Scottish teams in action midweek and no wins. That can only mean one thing, and that is it's time for the European Review Show. Welcome back, guys, to Fog Football. Like I said, four Scottish teams in action. Zero wins for Scotland. Zero victories in the coefficient. However, on a positive note, at least three of the four teams have still got a shot of qualifying into the next round. Yes, they do, and it's uh, you're going to win no bets predicting which team's not got no chance. The only team that's got no chance is the team that we gave no chance before the games were played. So. Exactly. And you know what? Looking at these predictions, some of us got them right, some of us got them severely wrong. But we'll have to go into them later on because we're kicking off on Tuesday night, and I like this week. It was Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. This is what we need every week. This is yeah, it. And, uh, to be next... fair, this is what we will get if Rangers do qualify for the Champions League. Yeah. You're going to get Rangers, Celtic, and then Aberdeen, and hopefully Hearts. Not Hib, so. No, I definitely I think not. Next Hib. week, though, is just Wednesday, Thursday, because Rangers you're, play Wednesday. You're going, to have to so. wait. you're going to have to wait to Saturday, or maybe Sunday, to see Hibs play. Aye. Which is a shame, but Rangers 2, PSV 2 was the final score. You went with 1 1, I went with. 3-1 Rangers. And you know what? I got I got the uh, result correct. You got the amount of goals correct. Uh, I'm not going to give myself any points for the amount of goals correct. Well, hold on here. If you, if you combine both our predictions, we got it right. You said four goals, I said a draw. Boom, 2-2. Two, two. All right. What do you mean you're not going to give yourself credit? We won. I went for a 3-1 Rangers win. Tomorrow. I went for the draw, so we I win. did the win. We win. We win. Aye. Rangers didn't, though. Ah, well, that doesn't, that doesn't fucking matter. <laughs> Aye, but Rangers, I mean, I think a draw was a fair result. I mean, the goal deserved to win the game, but poor defending. Now, there are certain people that will say Rangers were outplayed on every aspect, on every blade of grass. I didn't see that. If you want to say PSV were the better side on the night, fair enough. If you want to say PSV deserved to win on the night, fair enough. But to say PSV outplayed Rangers, I think it's a stretch. I thought PSV... Were pretty decent in the first half, not so great in the second half. I would rate PSV's performance a six out of ten. No, I'd give it a six. I, I'd, I'd probably, probably give Rangers a five. Yeah, probably uh, give them like a <laughs> without the goal in the first half. It's probably like a three. Like Rangers, in terms of defensively, had the more affordable goals. I feel like PSV couldn't really do much against about Rangers goals, especially the second Rangers goal. PSV did have more attempts. They did have more possession. They did have more attacks. They did have more corners. I mean, yeah. I mean, overall, I'm not gonna d deny they were the, they weren't the better side because they were, but I I just, I just think Rangers did enough to get a draw. And when you think about it, Rangers led twice, and like you said, I think Rangers' goals were more avoidable, the goals they conceded. So I I think two two is a fair result to be fair. And you know, the tie's very much alive. Rangers don't even need to win, which is always a plus going away from home. Aye, so that's pretty much all I've got to say about that. Great goal for Seema. And to be fair, the Great second goal... goal from yeah, the, the, pass, the yeah. pass for Dessos, that's the best thing he's done since being at Rangers, 100%. It was a great ball. Two assists for him. Uh, I'm not giving him the first assist. I'm giving him the first assist. No, no, it was in the record, but... He did not get two assists. Did he not? No, he didn't get assisted for the first goal. Well, he, he helped. He, he was in Yeah, he helped, like, uh, he helped cause it, like, but he didn't get the assist. Nah, uh, the Sangari goal... I thought the Singari goal was a decent finish for Singari. The look the John goal was like such a poor goal to concede. Set pieces, Rangers just seem to be not very good at defending set pieces, whether it be domestically or in Europe. No. Every time a team gets a corner, you're fearing the worst. Yep. And this was, I mean, look the young, big lanky. I mean, he broke a door. And that is something that Rangers are going to have to improve on. Rectify. If they are going to, even if they don't get in the Champions League, even in the Europa League, you can't really defend like the way they do and expect to get away with it. No, Rangers from open play, I thought defended really well. Yes, right. I think the goal, the actual goal they did concede, right, the Singare one, I think was avoidable. But at the end of the day, the dummy was quite good. But you can't go into a game fearing that you're going to concede from every corner. You can't. That's just not a way to play football. Unless your hearts and don't concede many corners, then. No, that's what annoys me about Rangers, though. It seems like every goal, every, more or less every goal Rangers can see, it's like, that's avoidable. I hate that. I'd rather get fucking ripped to shreds and be like, oh, you know what? It's just a better team. It's even against Frankfurt, right? I don't want to go back to that game, but if goals are in Bassey, just fucking sort it out. It's dealt with. But in the end, you're thinking about, oh, like you'd rather be beat by a 35-year-old, uh, 35 35-yard 35 strike. It's like, it's like Hearts tonight. Well, look, the John can't be far away for 35, can he? He can't be, but it's like Hearts of Night. Great second goal for Pack, but the first goal, it's like, what, what's Rolls doing? What's he doing? Anyway, I 2-2. Rangers 
obviously underdogs now have to go to Holland. I still think they can pull it after. They beat them last year in Holland. No see no reason why they can't do it again. No. And yeah, exactly. P you can talk about PSV's got better. I mean, based off that performance, I wouldn't say there's much in them being better. Because, like, people are saying Rangers are worse and people are saying PSV are much better. Would you really say Rangers were worse than what they played last year? La- the game last Dude, year? Rangers weren't good last year against PSV. No. I don't know what people were watching. I thought Rangers were fortunate. Very fortunate. It was PSV mistakes, really, that gave Rangers the win last year. The goalkeeper had a fucking howler. And then there was another goal Rangers scored where it was really bad defending for PSV. So. Yeah, at home. Yeah, so, I mean, let's be real. Two out of the three goals Rangers got last year against PSV were PSV errors. You can actually argue that tonight Rangers scored two perfectly good goals. Yep. And if anyone was gifting goals away tonight, or on Tuesday night, it was Rangers. Anyway, that's it. 2-2. Two, two. I still think they can go through. Unfortunately, I think PSV will do it. But I wouldn't say Rangers are not out of this. Yeah, I mean, at least they've got the safety net of the Europa League. But I believe now it's looking more like part two of Europa League instead of part one. Because uh, Dynamo Zagreb's going through, so that's not ideal. Dynamo Zagreb. Anyway, let's move on to the Europa League. We're going to skip... Nah, you know what? We'll do an order. Screw it. We'll, we'll let's go with Hibs. I don't want to talk about this one. Five, Hibs, nil. Aston Villa, five. In other words, Scotland, nil. Aston Villa, five. I've seen Hibs get a lot of criticism for this defeat. People saying that... Talk sports saying that Scottish football is a joke. Scottish football is embarrassing. They feel bad for Scottish football. They have sympathy for Scottish football. It's like, wind your fucking neck in, right? Yeah, Hibs lost to Aston Villa 5-0, but Aston Villa's a good side who could beat many teams 5-0. Let's be completely honest. They just beat Everton 4-0. And then the week before that, they lost to Newcastle 5-1. Does that mean Aston Villa's a garbage team now, according to talk sport logic? Any team can get humped. It is what it is. Yeah, and... uh our predictions, you went with 3-1 Aston Villa. I went with 5-1 Aston Villa, so I got that the closest. Um, and you know what? I'll say fair play to Lee Johnston. I thought he actually set them up relatively well. He set them up very open with a 4-3-3, but he went for it. I respect that. They could have sat back and got pumped 5-0. No, may as well go for it. Now, they only regist- registered one shot. But see, watching the game, Hibs had a lot of chances. And a lot, actually, to be honest, most of them were offside. Which, or oh, they don't count. But... I know it. Forward. That's well and good, but there's one question that needs to be asked here. The bottom of the league. Is the tie over? Ah, it might be. Ah, there you go. Let's move on then to Hacking. Let's move on to Sweden, where it was BK Hacking taking on Aberdeen in a pretty even game, in my opinion. But that didn't stop Hacking from taking the lead in the first half and then taking... A two-goal lead through a Sadiq penalty on the 69th minute. And at this point, I was thinking, right... Just get back to the just get back to the second tie at two 0 and see what you can do. Maybe if you can sneak a goal and make it two one, then that that would be fantastic. But at two 0 don't concede anymore because I think at two 0 it's unlikely, but there's a chance. Yeah, it starts getting three and four, and you may as well not even play you're the in second the boat. Yeah, you're in the Hibs boat, and that is a boat that is sinking to the bottom of the ocean. You don't want to be in that boat. So I'm thinking right at this point, just get two 0 right. Worst case scenario, 2-0, and you can you get the first goal at Pataudry and all of a sudden you're right back in the game. But Aberdeen didn't sell for 2-0, didn't even sell for 2-1. They made it 2-2. Two goals in the space of four minutes. Miofsky and Devlin got Aberdeen right back in. And I don't know what happened to Aberdeen, but they were like just a, a switch just flipped. And all of a sudden, they were out playing hacking. And they actually had the ball in the net for a third time, but unfortunately, it was offside. Not a lot in it. And we didn't get to see a good angle of the replay, but from the angle I did see, it looked marginally offside. Then Hacking went down to 10 men late on. Unfortunately, it was very late though, so Aberdeen didn't have enough time to take advantage of the extra man. But overall, this is the Swedish champions that Hacking are playing. And make no mistake about it, Celtic and Rangers would have struggled against Hacking tonight. Yep. So I think for Aberdeen to come for 2 0 down in Sweden against the champs is a great result. Is a, is a fantastic result. When you factor in that they probably could have won it towards the end, I just hope that doesn't come back to haunt them. Nope. Uh, you predicted 1 1. I predicted 2 1 hacking, and we were pretty close. I got, uh, I got two draws. I got the draws right. It's weird though. Going into this game, I thought. Like I, did, I mean, I predicted a hacking win, but looking at the odds, you would think that like, this hacking team are world beaters. Like Aber- what you Aberdeen are seventeen to two. Seventeen to two. What the f- what's that? But for me, Aberdeen are favourites. 
It's about 55-45 for me. For the to qualify? Aye, to qualify, yeah. I think that's fair. Because realistically, right, if Aberdeen can bring it back for 2-0 doing away, what can they do at home? Even if they go 1-0 down at Pataji, you'd still think they'd be able to uh, sort something out. Yeah, and I think with the crowd behind them, a bit more belief, I think the fact that they have come back for 2-0, they're going to go into this game knowing now that they can actually do it against Hacking. So, no, I think momentum's with Aberdeen. And I think Aberdeen will actually beat Hacking at Pataji. That's my prediction. That's your prediction. I'm not going to give a scoreline right now, but I think we will see Aberdeen beating Hacking. We need some. We need something to uh, boost the coefficient of it. <laughs> we do. We really, really do. And we ain't going to get that for the last game that we had to talk about, guys, because in Tyne Castle it finished. Hearts won, pack two, disappointing night. Not the greatest game in the world. I feel like Hearts played okay. But in the end, OK, wasn't enough to get a positive result for the game. I mean, you can argue 2-1 is positive in a sense that the tie is still alive. But, nah, you never want to lose your home game. Especially when it's there to be won. Or at least to get a draw out of. Hearts let this slip. If Hearts got outplayed tonight, if, if Pack were this great side and Hearts came away with a 2-1 defeat, you could argue, well, you know what, we've done well there. We're still in the tie, just about. But for me, it's disappointing because this, this is a very winnable game. And Hearts haven't won it. Pack did not look like this whole three levels above Rosenberg pish that you are hearing. They didn't. They looked on par with Rosenberg. In fact, uh, to me, Hearts didn't play anywhere near the level they did against Rosenberg. Yeah, it was poor for Hearts. That's not saying Hearts were awful, but realistically, Hearts could have won this very easily. It was mistakes. Great start, and then it gets cancelled out with a Kai Rolls tackle to give away another penalty. It's like, you could not have asked for a better start. Shankland, penalty... Nine minutes in, one nil. About thirty seconds later, penalty to to uh, pack. Just garbage. Don't, don't think it was necessary. To be honest, like probably neither penalty was necessary to give away. So, uh, hearts. Yeah, but at to- least there one was a, It was like a, it was a clash of legs. Yeah, the the Ro- the Rolls one doesn't have to do it. He's risking a lot doing that. About the half an hour mark of the first half, I don't know how Hearts did not score. Shanklin had two shots deflected. Uh, I think a header saved, then he got the rebound, that was blocked, then it fell to for Boyce, he got the shot, that was blocked. That was Hearts' I think best chance, other than the penalty. Second half, great for Boyce, great movement, great ball control. At the, I mean, Boyce reminds me of Messi a wee bit. A wee bit. Just a wee bit. Do you think Messi has posters of Liam Boyce? I don't know. Do you think William Boyce has posters of Messi? No, I think it's all right, but... I'd, I'd definitely say so. I think he's surpassed those Messi posters. Anyway, he picks out Shankland. Shankland picks out the back of the net. Great finish, but unfortunately, offside and, you know, a bit unforgivable here, really. He should... No, he's the last guy in the line. He should see where he is. As great as he is, right, and as great as the finish it was, he's cost him here. Could I think that may sound harsh, but he should be on. For me, Hearts were Hearts had all the momentum at this point. Yep, and this killed it. And I think if Hearts go two one up, they see out the game. And I'd maybe even go as far as saying they maybe get another goal. Yep. However, they didn't. It was one one, and then Pat get a corner. And this Hearts the don't game. defend it really. They they're allowed to take it short. No one really closes the uh, player down. Sikovic, and he hits a shot for about twenty eight yards out. Approximately decent strike to be honest. I thought it maybe took a deflection. I didn't see enough angles of it, but I, it looked like it might have took a deflection off Shanklin because he kind of looked distraught when the ball, the ball went in the back of the net. And it went in the corner, and that was it really. 2 1. And it, honestly, if there was going to be another goal for this point, it did look like it was going to be packed. I know Hearts were trying to commit bodies forward, but I don't think they created anything in the last 15 minutes. They did not. And, then, and any time Pack got the ball, Hearts did look a little bit stretched at the back due to committing bodies and forward. The, and so. his team was just going down and calling for everything. Yeah, it was, it was disgraceful, like, to be honest. I mean, there's no call for that shite. And the referee was buying a lot of... No, they, of they were booting the ball away, wasn't even booking them. I hate that. Anyway. But in hindsight, what I will say is, looking back after the game's finished and the dust has settled, I think Hearts actually... If you just, just consider the last 15 minutes, I think Hearts have actually done all right to get away with 2-1 here because... Only one team looked like scoring in the last 15 minutes of the game. It wasn't hard. Well, I would say, but for me, you could look, this game before this uh, tie begun, 2-1 at home, if they could beat Yara said they've got fucking no chance. I think going to Greece, they've every bit of chance, because that team, are, I, I don't think they're that good. No, not me neither. Like, I always, you know, they might not have played their best tonight, right? I understand that. I don't really know much about them, but 
looking at them was like if hearts turn up and get a bit more lucky and they don't and they just are solid why can't they do it what even about? if hearts concede the first goal in greece they're not out because they were free one down on aggregate against rosenberg and they, brought it and they came back to win that four three and i just don't think pack are better than rosenberg and if they are there's not much in it yep uh you went with 2-1 though to hearts i went with 2-0 we both got it wrong Fucking shite at this prediction. Well, I got two right, didn't I? I didn't get any correct scores, but I got two results right. I got one result right. Damn. What a guy. Hold on. I got three results right, actually. mm, Aberdeen Rangers and Hibs. Aye, aye. Aye, fella, definitely no Hibs. So Hearts let me down? Aye, Hearts let you down. Fuck me, that's what happened. If that Shanklin goal didn't get disallowed, you'd have been on the money. I'd have been on the money. But you weren't? I was out of money. Damn. Just like Scotland at money, out of coefficient. Anyway, guys, that's it. Catch you in the next one. Hopefully next week we can turn it around. I mean, worst case scenario, you've, you've got three Scottish clubs in the group stages. Worst case. But unfortunately, due to the coefficient, that's not going to be the case for much longer. No. Although there is an extra spot opening up because of the extension to the European formats now. So even if we drop one place in the coefficients, we're still not going to drop out of an automatic spot in the, the league phase, so to speak. So that will change things up a lot, to be honest. Uh, you know what? I think it's the wrong choice, but I think it's going to be intriguing for the first season to see how that plays out. It's going to be intriguing, but for me, all this does is favour the big teams. See any chance now of these smaller, like, s- s- pot four, s- four seed teams getting out of the groups? That's all but gone. Yeah. Because you're playing an extra two games now. There is no groups. You're just taking on teams random. And I think the Champions League draw, I think the draw for the Champions League group stage is one of the most fun parts of the season. Yeah, no, Sitting there waiting to see that. who you get, and, and now you ain't going to get that. It's You're all just like, going to get six random games. So Yeah, it's all like one big fucking league phase. So it's, eight, play, it's eight games. Do you play the same team twice? It's eight, no, it's eight games. Four home, four away. And all different teams? Aye, there's no... It could be any, but... So it's, going, it's just so going to So could shit. a pot four team play... I know there's no pot four, but could like a pot four team play seven pot four teams, so to speak? It's going to be random. Right, but could, technically they could. Aye, but technically you could get shafted and play. I don't, I don't, I don't like it. There's just going to be. No, you could get all the. You could get the easy ties at home. Uh, I, I, this it was perfect. Champions League's perfect. Every team in the group plays the same teams, and you you play them at home. You play them away. That's fair. Six games, four teams. The home ties, and then the reverse fixtures and the away tie. That this new format is going to fucking suck. It's not fair. And I, I believe it's all about just getting more big teams into the competition and making sure the big teams get further in the competition. And they're talking about bringing Saudi clubs in. It's a fucking... It, it's a UEFA. It's a, it's a European competition. How can we bring Asian clubs in? I don't... Because money talks. Damn it. Bullshit. Anyway, guys, money talks. If you want to donate some money to Fog Football, feel free to do so down below. Right. We'll catch you in the next one. Hit my PayPal up, baby. Till then, though. Peace.